goal. He has started 2-0 this season. We are ready to go. And the first touch goes to the Denver Pioneers this afternoon. And we're getting a little bit of a break as far as the weather goes. Yeah, it's still 91 degrees, but the winds are out of the east. A little cool front has come in, and it doesn't feel quite as warm as it has lately. De Leon's going to get an early break because of a bad touch by Pino. But coming over to make the play, Westergrain to turn it into a corner when it easily could have been a goal for De Leon. It could have been a goal, and it also could have been a penalty kick. Very nice job by Westergren, one freshman bailing out another. Um, that is a turnover that could have haunted Pino, and uh, Mustangs were able to cover up for him. They're more than willing to give up a corner kick in exchange for not giving up a point-blank shot on Cole Johnson. Great chance for the Pioneers right off the bat. And here's Aiden O'Toole out of the corner. It's headed into the air to the top of the box, and Costa easily is able to play it out to midfield. Now, Denver comes in having only converted one of their shots this year, one of their 21, into a goal. They haven't had much success offensively, and it all comes down to margin plays, says uh, Jamie Franks. you got to convert on those margin plays. Yeah, that's right. I mean, you know, anytime you play, there are going to be chances are few and far between. And sure, they have one goal. The Pioneers have one goal in two games. But make no mistake, this is a very talented team, very capable of scoring. Just because they don't score more than one goal in two games doesn't mean they're going to be offensively silent for any extended stretch. The Mustangs have ample respect for the offensive abilities of the Pioneers. Take down on the far side by Lane Warrington, the senior for SMU, and results in a free kick for the Pioneers, who come in at 1-1. One and one. They lost to a ranked Oregon State team on the road in Corvallis and then turn that uh, around while they were still in Oregon at Portland where they came up with a one nothing win and uh, Jamie Franks loved the way that his team bounced back after that opener and uh, that's what it's all about is, is making adjustments especially for a, a good team and they're a lot like SMU in this fact that they've got a deep stable of seniors that they trust and then they've got some younger players that are playing key roles as well yeah i think you know we're going to be making comparisons all night between these two teams because jamie hudson are very similar coaches their career records are almost identical through seven years or they're both in their seventh year and they build their rosters similarly as well um you know it was no exaggeration in the pregame show when we said these are kind of mirror images of each other two very good teams that you can bet will also be playing in november Denver had an early chance there in the white, moving left to right to start this one. And SMU in the home blue kits, moving from right to left. SMU number nine, in large part thanks to their season opening victory over number eight Stanford. Really stunning the Cardinal, three to one on Gabe Costa's brace, 15 seconds apart in the second half. Won a rebounded penalty kick off his own rebound to give SMU the lead and then 15 seconds later he blasted one in from just beyond midfield to put it away for SMU. This one's played into the 18 and nice little punch out. Westergrain saves it again out beyond midfield. Yeah, anytime Next. you have that much congestion in the back end, um, you know, you'd love to string passes together, dropping it right on somebody's foot, but when the, t when the situation calls for it, there's nothing wrong with just launching it out of traffic and regrouping. This one is chipped in on goal by Ronan Wynn. Seemed as though he was trying to put it into Stefan De Leon and give him an opportunity, but it didn't work out. And it's just an easy roll on goal for Cole Johnson, who has not had a shutout yet this season, but has performed very well and had the save of the year against HBU in a three to one victory. One of the plays of the year so far as he was able to punch one out of the air last Thursday from distance that uh, could have made it a one goal game again. Yeah, De Leon is, he had an assist on O'Toole's game, uh, goal in the victory over Portland. Um, but De Leon is very different than say Gabe Costa. He is, he is not a pass first guy. He is a dangerous striker and the Mustangs are very well aware of where number seven is gonna be all night long. And of course, SMU has number 10 on their side, Knut Ollander. 
Slipping it off to Roman Knox, getting his first start for SMU. That's a feel-good story for Knox, who started his career at UNC. And I should say his second start. He got one back in the spring. But Knox coming off the bench late against HBU. Nearly scored a goal off that free kick. That was a beautiful free kick from about 35 yards out that nearly went. He did. And that's sort of the dream for any reserve player who comes in off the bench. You know, everybody wants more minutes. And if you can come in off the bench and get a quick goal, that gives you a very good argument when it's uh, time to convince the coaches that you de deserve a little more run. It's a nice little battle out there in the corner. Pino really going after it, and Jake Meekham shielding him away. You see Denver Pioneer head coach Jamie Franks there. Look at that record. Okay, pay attention to this. 74 and 27 and 13. Great record as he starts his seventh season. Won his fifth Summit League out of seven years last year, and he's been the four-time coach of the year in the Summit League as well. Just outstanding. Yeah, he's a terrific coach, and the Pioneers are going to be either the favorite or among the favorites to win that league just about every year, as long as he has been there and as long as he stays. And a stoppage is called here for an injury for a moment, and it looks as though Roman Knox, so we'll get a shot of it. There it is, Roman Knox with a, was hanging his head down near midfield and he's going to be forced to come to the sideline and get looked at by Becky Regal here. Yeah, this is our third game of the year and we're getting a little too familiar with uh, calling Becky Regal's name. Like he knocked together with Knut Ollander midair. Yeah, I mean obviously inadvertent. It's you know friendly fire from one of your own teammates. Knut Ollander very big strong player and completely inadvertent. Both guys going for the ball and bumped heads and uh, Roman Knox came out on the short end of it but he's already back on the field and looks to be okay. Yeah he's able to stay in as here's Scott Gay Simonson great in the second half against HBU finds Costa in the middle so very dangerous right there next to Knut Ollander. You can use the term dangerous for both of those guys and I need to get the thesaurus out to figure out what uh, else I can say besides dangerous because those guys are lurking all game to make plays in the middle of the field. Yeah, and, you know, the Mustangs have a lot of guys that you can tag that word on, whether it's Papa Endoy or Skage Simonson or Kieran Pino over on the left, Lane Warrington on the right. It's, uh, it's a very tough team to defend. The Mustangs have scored six goals in a couple of games, and with a luck, little bit of luck, could have made it eight or nine, probably. Simonson taken down by Trevor Wright. Wright, the freshman out of Castle Rock, Colorado, just south of Denver, between Denver and Colorado Springs. Takes down Skage Simonson, which is not easy to do at 6'3", 195. Yeah, Skage Simonson is one of the biggest guys on the field in every game SMU plays. But one of the biggest guys for either team. Putting him on the ground is is no small task. And, um, you know, the Pioneers sort of pled their case, and referee Leland Grant wasn't listening. Restart on the free kick, and the header bounces on goal right on the head of Thomas Haney, but softly right into the midst of Will DeSantis, who has gotten all three starts to begin this season for Denver. Yeah, Tom Haney for the last three years has played with a protective helmet, which I talked to him the other day about it, and he said it was his own choice, just, you know, protective against concussions and that kind of thing. And he has abandoned the helmet this year, and I think he's heading the ball a little more accurately or with a little more control which is significant when he's a six foot three guy who has already made a living clearing out corners and free kicks into the box on the defensive end. And now you see him come up into the offensive end and become a target on set pieces. Part of that back line, you see him play in the back, the, the center back position, at least early on in a three true defender alignment for SMU. But SMU has those wings. They run up and down each side on the far end. Number 14, Lane Warrington will do the running. And on the near side, number 21, Kieran Pino, who again was honored by the league this week, is uh, another one of them as well, who is uh, so um, a player you've got to mark on the other side. Warrington plays it into space. A chase for Knut Ollander. Gives it to Papa Endoy. Endoy dribbling in. Endoy has it flicked away. But staying right on it is Allender, and here's a header that goes off the top of the net by Lane Warrington. Excellent pass by Allender, and Warrington just had to go a little too high. Really unselfish play by a couple of guys on that play. One was Canute Allender, who took a pass just a couple of yards off the end line, 
and I think many players would have been tempted to simply turn and try to blast it through or around a defender, but instead he cut it back at a very sharp angle, dropping it for Papa Endoy, and Endoy was able to keep the play alive with a cross into the middle. First sustained chance for SMU and Kevin Hudson. Remember that record for Denver's Jamie Franks, 74, 27, and 13? Well, there's uh, the one for Hudson. He has just uh, two fewer wins, the exact same number of losses, and a couple fewer draws. Really, really interesting. Both of them in their seventh year, and they've done outstanding jobs continuing the success of these programs. Yeah, these are two of the finer coaches really anywhere in the country. And as long as they are on these respective benches, you're going to see these programs have a lot of success going forward. A late foul call coming here against Denver. The Pioneers don't like it. And elite official Leland Grant has told one of the Pioneers to go away. He was saying that in the direction of Ben Smith, the sophomore midfield. It was interesting. Jake Meekham was the guy who was whistled for taking down Costa. And when he got up, he sort of did like a Dikembe Mutombo finger wag at the official, at Leland Grant. And many officials are okay with explaining why they made or didn't make a call to a player who disagrees. But when you do something that physically looks like you're showing them up, some of them have a quicker whistle or a quicker card. So it'll be interesting to see how Leland Grant uh, follows up on that if, if anyone else does anything similar going forward. No cards yet tonight. But the passion is high in the 11th minute and turning to the 12th here at SMU in Dallas where the Mustangs will play all their non-conference games, all five of them with good reason. This was kicked out by Denver via throw in for SMU. SMU head coach Kevin Hudson welcoming his newest member of the family. He and his wife Christina bringing in uh, their second child Allison into the world here recently. And with that being the case, Hudson wanted to keep all of the non-conference close to home here in September, and uh, it's worked out. They've got a new child at home, and he's not getting any sleep, so at least he doesn't have to be out of town. Yeah, he could sleep in the offseason. Here's a little run for Costa. Down to Endoy. What a combination. Turning to the middle on the right foot, kicks it back. Here's Costa with the left foot and drifts it just beyond the far post. Yeah, Costa cranked a shot at the lower right corner. And at that angle, it ended up going wide by several feet. But Knut Ollander was standing all alone just inside the penalty spot. And when Costa blasted that shot, it goes all the way across the mouth of the goal and out the far side. And Ollander standing there with his hands out saying, hey, I was open. I had a perfect shot. He would have been able to pick any corner of the net. So SMU misses out on their best chance of the day. They've had a couple of chances, the header by Warrington. And now this shot, which goes wide, may be a missed opportunity to slip it down to Ollander for his second goal in as many games. And Costa, it's not as though he's not a player that loves to pass. That's what he's been known for in the past as well. Yeah, I mean, he gets headlines for goals, but he is a brilliant passer. And, and you don't throw that word around loosely, but he really is. And there's no way he was shooting if he saw Ollander. He just looked up, saw the corner of the goal, took a crack at it, and probably saw number 10 standing there a second later and wanted it back. A chance for Denver, and that one is tipped past the keeper and past the goal as well to make it a, a, a kick from the corner as, as Stefan De Leon got to his right foot, put on a rather weak shot, but here's another opportunity from the corner for the Pioneers. Yeah, and we're only a couple of weeks into the season, but already here we are 13 minutes into the game and the sun is less glaring and blinding than it is, has been in some of the earlier couple of games. O'Toole, far post, and this one's going to go on Denver to give it back to SMU on a foul inside the box. So yeah, nothing off the two corners for Denver so far. A lot of times when there's a collision or a lot of congestion in the box, call is usually going to go against the offense and if there's a total cluster and you can't see who's doing what to whom it's almost always going to go against the offense he's steve lansdale longtime american athletic conference soccer expert i'm john little great to have you with us 15 minutes into this contest in the 15th minute here in dallas 
SMU starting the season 2-0, by the way. The SMU women playing on the road at Denver today. A Denver team that came in ranked number 23 in one of the polls as Endoy gives this one a run and really tries to make it hard. But uh, this one's going to go on Endoy as here comes a yellow. That'll be interesting to see a replay. Leland Grant does not like the way that Endoy went after that ball. And he picks up the yellow card. Yeah, it looked like, okay, you can see on the replay, Endoy tried to get around the defender on the left side. And in so doing, when he reached his left foot out, he reached his right arm up and grabbed him by the shoulder, um, Liam Johnson, and just put, yanked him to the ground. I don't know that it merited a card. It certainly merited a whistle against Endoy. Endoy is still pleading his case, and so far, Leland Grant has shown a willingness to listen to objections from players on each side. Now, Liam Johnson is about as good as it gets for the Denver Pioneers, an obvious team leader, fourth-year starter, team captain as well. And he induces Endoy into the car. SMU's had some early chances here. Nice job by, by Brett, uh, Ben Smith there. He saw Costa looking upfield towards Skage Simonson, stuck his foot out and blocked what would have been about a 30-yard pass across the field, and Skage Simonson had some room to run if he'd gotten onto the ball. Mustangs in the middle third. As I was saying, the SMU women went on the road to Denver, a ranked Denver team. Got up 3-0, ended up winning 4-2 over Denver. Denver. The game-winning goal uh, ended up being an own goal for Denver in that one. That's a terrific victory for Chris Petroselli and the SMU women's program. Going on the road, playing at altitude, and being a ranked team. There's not a coach in the country that wouldn't take that win. It's outstanding, and it gives them some momentum. Coming back to play Oklahoma State, very good. Cowgirl team is coming in here. On Thursday, a game we'll have here on ESPN+. Plus. A lot of home matches early this season for both the men's and women's soccer teams here at SMU. Cole Johnson playing a little bit with fire there, sort of playing catch in the back with Brandon Tervega and ended up getting rid of that ball under a lot of pressure. A lot of jostling on this near side and Brandon Tervega bumps up against Destin Norman making his first start of the year and the call goes in favor of SMU as Norman fell on the ball. Yeah, Norman clearly thought that was a thought that Tervega should have been whistled for a foul there. No whistle but Norman just reached out and grabbed the ball. He was going to get ready to tee it up and take a free kick. The only problem is the guys wearing yellow didn't agree with him. Destin Norman actually a fifth year starter on this team and we're going to witness some of that this season with the COVID year in effect. Denver did get to play an eight game spring season. They went six and two in the Pioneer League. Won that league again but did not get to play in the NCAA tournament because of COVID issues at the end of the season which is just a microcosm of the spring. You know, SMU had their COVID issues. Obviously Denver did as well. And certainly, uh, we are not beyond that by any stretch of the imagination, but it shows you how frustrating that spring season was for some of these teams. No, we're absolutely not beyond it. I mean, there are college players and coaches, there are professional players who are getting diagnosed with COVID and, having, and getting assigned to lists, having to sit out for a game or two. We're far from beyond it. And um, you're right, Denver was certainly hit by it really hard in the spring, but there's not a team in the country that hasn't been affected by it and, and will continue to be. It certainly takes discipline and concentration by teams. But for SMU, they say the biggest difference in this ball is being able to have a, a and be together again. So this long ball is nearly saved in on a nice run, but Denver is it is saved in, in fact. But the keeper is able to come over Will DeSantis to start a run the other way. That was Slide a tackle, not quite there. De Leon right back on the ball at the edge of the box, dribbling in. All over him, Westergrain trying to run up on him to the side, and it's out to touched out, last touched by Denver. Tom Haney and Mads Westergrain sort of teamed up on De Leon there, hmm. and 
it shows exactly how much the Mustangs think of what a dangerous threat De Leon is. They're going to throw everything they've got at this guy and make somebody else try to beat them. There's a takedown for a free kick. And again, right there at the head of it is Stefan De Leon, part of the preseason watch list at forward in the Pine or in the uh, Summit League, I should say. 51st career cap for Stefan De Leon, who has six career goals heading into this one. He's such a quick player, and you know, there are a lot of players with speed, but the way the technical skill he's able to maintain at a very, very high rate of speed is really almost unique. And uh, Goes a long way toward explaining why he causes so many headaches for opposing defenses. Aiden O'Toole will take the set piece again with the right foot. O'Toole in on goal. Rips right into Cole Johnson. Makes the catch with the mitts. Johnson was a little casual coming out and snatching that ball out of the air because he had Griffin Meyer coming in from the right side. And... Uh, there were no Mustang defenders in between them, and Johnson sort of strolled out and grabbed it very casually. I mean, obviously, he can judge his speed better than we can from here, but, uh, you know, it worked. Absolutely, it did. Back to the differences between the spring season and the fall season, you can just have a locker room now in the Mustangs. They weren't allowed to be in the locker room together right. because of the closed quarters, but that really has changed the game for them, and they feel like that they can be a closer team, uh, you know, just get to know each other better with being able to have that locker room time with each other. Yeah, and being able to watch film in a normal setting, and, and uh, again, it's, it's everywhere. You know, the SMU football team, changes for changed for practice every day in the concourse of its stadium they didn't have a locker room either mm. and there are schools across the country that face similar challenges like that obviously we just spoke about the challenges denver's faced it was uh to say the least it was a year that no one had ever seen before and we all hope nobody ever sees again no doubt about it nifty little <laughs> back kick there by acosta trying to get it down to endoy and now smu has it back with some numbers here comes Ollander, slipping it off. A crosser is headed away. Mustangs back on possession once more. Roman Knox in the midfield, playing the top of that midfield tonight. Getting his first start of the year. Warrington covers an awful lot of ground very quickly, and he got there a little too quickly that time and uh, got one of the pioneers in the ankle, drawing a quick whistle. Few chances early on for both sides. Five fouls so far on Denver, three on SMU. A couple of corners for Denver so far. SMU has not had one. SMU has outshot Denver three to one, but only one shot has been on goal as Costa takes it away for a moment another solid defender Ronan Wynn comes in to take it away a New Zealander what have you thought about the style of play so far because there have been times where each team has uh, been in a good spot maybe to pick up a go-ahead goal yeah I think they've been fairly equal you know one of the stats that coaches look at um, you mentioned a couple moments ago that uh, Denver's had a couple of corner kicks. SMU has yet to have one, and that is a stat that a lot of coaches look at as an indicator of possession in which end of the field, and I think that's pretty reflective. Yeah, they've gone up and down, but I think Denver's had a little bit of the better run of play so far through the first 22 and a half minutes. Um, but in the opener, you know, Stanford was dominating both ends of the field as well, so there are certainly adjustments that can be made. This is far from over, obviously, in a scoreless a scoreless draw so far, but I think Denver's had the, the upper hand a little bit so far. For Denver, they're playing their third straight road match. And again, Franks thought against Oregon State in the opener that they really controlled play, especially the, through the first 20 minutes, but then they turn around, they're down one nothing after a penalty kick. Here's a big giveaway. It's tipped and in. A goal by Justin Norman, the fifth year senior making his first start of 2021 and he puts Denver out in front. Cole Johnson doesn't have a chance on this goal because it gets deflected 
I think it might have been Knut Allender who got a foot on it and not enough to block the shot. But you see Tervega bringing it out of the back. And when, um, and then handing it back to Cole Johnson here. But when Dustin Norman takes this shot, we'll get a better look at it there in a moment. But uh, yeah, it's just a, a giveaway right into his feet. Here yeah, it comes. Johnson, look, here it is. He takes the shot and knows Tom Haney threw his leg out. And, you know, that's ob obviously what a defender has to do. But in doing so, he changed the direction of the ball, not enough to keep it out of the pipes. I think Cole Johnson had a perfectly good look at the shot, but having a redirect halfway through, uh, there's not a goalie anywhere that would have stopped that. Unfortunate for Johnson, really nice goal for Destin Norman. So similar to the Stanford game, SMU gives up that first goal. And this one's gonna go right back over to Denver. So Destin Norman, his second goal of his career. This is his 65th game and 60th start. And here's another giveaway. Roman Knox down to Costa, poked back out of trouble by Denver. Costa tried to flick it back through to Knox with his heel on an overlapping run. But uh, really nice job by Ronan Wynn sniffing that out and, and blocking the pass just as it was coming off of Costa's foot. See how SMU responds. After the giveaway, and then the fortunate tip off of a defender. Although certainly, it's a situation where Norman may have been able to beat the keeper anyway. You just don't know exactly where the trajectory of that one was going. It did look like Cole Johnson was in fairly good position to make a save, though. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it, that was an unfortunate goal for Johnson, but not one that you blame on him. But I think of greater concern is... The Mustangs seem to have be a little bit casual on the back end tonight. Um, just a few seconds into the game, we saw Pino with a giveaway. He tried to play the ball back to Johnson and didn't get enough on it. And so uh, that created a quick chance for Denver. We had one a little while ago where Tom Haney played it back to Johnson as well, and it was very casual again, and Johnson had to run out and grab it. Um, I think if you're Kevin Hudson and the coaching staff, you want to see a little bit more pace and a little more uh, crispness on some of these passes in the back end. I mean, they're wonderful defenders, but uh, they've just been a little cavalier with some of their passes so far. And nearly another giveaway here as Norman nearly took it away from Pino. Meanwhile, ready for a couple substitutions on either side. SMU is going to make a change up front. Jose Ortiz is in for Papa Endoy, 17 for 7. Meanwhile, Denver ends up bringing out two players. Jake Meekum comes to the bench, along with Griffin Meyer. And on for the first time is Kingo Ojeda. And also coming in is Eli Marinus, who has played in one of the two games this season. Kingo Ojeda is, uh, for a guy coming off the bench, he is a guy the Mustangs are very well aware of. And, uh, was, was described as an elite scoring threat. And I wonder if the substitution of Ortiz for Endoy is not so much about getting Endoy rest because you know, he's only 30 minutes into this or not even 30 minutes into this, but he has several times had rather passionate discussions with referee uh, Leland Grant. And I wonder if maybe there's a little bit of frustration and the SMU coaches just want to let him catch his breath and regroup a little bit before going back in. Honestly, both teams have been talking an awful lot with Grant today. And so far, Grant has remained patient about it. He did hand out the yellow card to Endoy earlier, but the last thing you want to do is uh, leave a frustrated player out there with a yellow card without a chance to uh, regroup. Little run here for Allender in the middle. Slips it to Costa. Costa looking for Pino with that left foot. Great left-sided player, and it is blocked out nicely by Ben Smith to the applause of the Denver Pioneer bench, but a corner coming up for the Mustangs. Yeah, giving up a corner is certainly preferable over giving up a cross into the middle. You'll get one here. Uh, it'll be interesting to see what approach they take. You're putting Skage Simonson, who's, again, one of the biggest guys on the field in every game, 
you're sticking him right in the net. So you've got to have a defender, Destin Norman, and your goalie, DeSantis, are both worried about him. And now you've added Tervega and Westergren and Haney, big targets, playing the short ball instead to Allender. And the header goes into the middle of the box and still on possession for SMU for now. Interesting set piece play there. It uh, nearly ended up in a kind of a secondary header opportunity at the top of the six. It was. You think when you first look at that and you see several guys over six feet standing right on the goal line, you figure lob it into the goal line, see if somebody can get ahead on it. But by playing it out high to Allender, you maybe generate a tiny bit of confusion in the Denver defense. He flicks it across to Haney, and it was a beautiful pass. Haney needed about two more inches of elevation to really get something on that ball back into the center. Here's a long ball and a chip after a run by Kingo Ojeda. It goes wide, but still, you hear the Denver Pioneer bench behind us. They are enthused as to see their team not only up one nothing, but also with some of these inspired runs putting pressure on SMU. I've always been a, a believer in the reading the body language of teams, and um, you're right. The, the Denver bench is very animated, very vocal. Obviously, they're encouraged by being up a goal. Um, but the SMU bench, a little more uh, sedentary. Is that a word for it? Cautious. Cautious, waiting their turn for, or waiting for something to get them off the bench. You bet. This one is chipped out of trouble by Denver once more. The Pioneers giving up three goals in their opener to Oregon State, but then shutting out Portland on the road, 1-0. Big bounce back victory. And Pioneer head coach Jamie Franks had to say about that one as we look at a long run here for Jose Ortiz. Ortiz not able to keep it in. And it is going to end up in a corner, though. It does go off of a Pioneer. But uh, Denver head coach thought, as long as we continue to grow individually and collectively this season, we're going to win a lot of games. He saw that improvement from game one to game two, did coach Franks. And now he's looking for even more in game three. Yeah, and the, and the Pioneers have the game's first goal from, from Destin Norman, but I think they present a very dangerous front uh, with Norman, O'Hara, and De Leon up front. Very different Cur crafty players. Here's a chance after the curling drive by Allender. That one goes off the top of the goal. A nearly one that goes down for Brandon Tervega. And he's got to be hard sick about side. that. He took the shot, banged it down into the dirt, and on the way back up, it deflected off of a player. And if it hadn't touched a player's foot, I think it's in the back of the net. That's I mean, that's so a shot dangerous. that should find its way in some somehow. He hits it down into the turf. It hits a defender's leg. And just that slight touch on the defender's leg got it up enough to hit the crossbar and uh, keep it scoreless on the SMU side. Yeah, Will DeSantis leaning uh, is uh, so far living right. A couple substitutions for SMU. You see the senior, Skage Simonson, number eight, coming to the bench along with another senior, Lane Warrington. Bailey Sparks is on for the first time, the freshman out of Plano who started the last matchup. Yeah, the Mustangs are very, very high on Bailey Sparks. Another crosser, this time a header by Trevega, but that's an easier save for DeSantis. Yeah, DeSantis has been clean so far. Hasn't been tested a whole lot yet. Um, but uh, Coach Franks was saying during the week that he really feels like he has two elite goalkeepers, and certainly DeSantis has been up to every challenge so far tonight. Castro, the other one, to come in for SMU. Here's a play ahead for the very speedy Ohira. Ohira at the edge of the box. Sends it back outside. Denver stays on possession. Tell now where the pesky Bailey Sparks takes it away. And, and that's just... That spirited midfielder, one of those guys who never gives up. Here's another penalty coming up against the aggressive Pioneers. It'll be their sixth foul. And Leland Grant stopped the clock right away. We're going to see a yellow card this time for Trevor Wright, uh, the big 6'3", 200-pound freshman defender who put uh, Castro on his back, took his feet out from under him. Deserved, the card was certainly deserved. I don't think he was trying to hurt him, but in that position, when you take his feet out and flip him like that, the, uh, the official really has very little option. Yellow in the 32nd minute for Trevor Wright, the freshman out of Castle Rock, Colorado, who has been on a couple different collisions here so far. 
13 and a half left in the first half. SMU trying to figure out a way to tie up the match. After a goal goes in for Denver off the foot of Destin Norman. This one slips through. Knox trying to get it down to Jose Ortiz, but it's played right back. SMU keeping the pressure on. Here's Bailey Sparks to the middle. Chipping it off. Costo with the drive. It goes wide. Yeah, very difficult pass by Canute Ollander simply because he was running after a bouncing ball and he didn't want to hit it too hard. It would have been very easy to launch that over Costa, but very light touch, dropped it for Costa, and Costa was about a half a step away from getting it on frame. A couple more Denver Pioneers coming on for the first time, and it looks like Ollander just st stood back and just said, I'm not going to play this thing yeah. anymore. I think he touched it, but only barely. Would have been an interesting uh, scoring decision by the official scorer had that one gone in for Costa. But in the end, it does go wide. And yet another penalty on the Denver Pioneers. Pioneers, by the way, bringing in A.J. Francois, a freshman defender out of Texas, out of Austin. And also coming in for the first time is Lucas Fisher. Fisher out of Portland, Oregon. Costa running after this one again, but... There's Lucas Fisher turning it away, keeping it in the possession of the white shirts in the attacking third for SMU. That one slapped out and saved from going into his face by Jamie Franks. Nice reaction by the head coach of the Pioneers. And his entire team is making fun of him. But he, you know, good reaction by Coach Franks. Got his foot up very quickly and then avoided taking one right in the middle of his, uh, in the middle of his face. Who says coaches are too old to defend themselves? We know that's not the case. Here comes a corner for Denver. Pioneers continue to put pressure on SMU tonight. By the way, if you're curious, the wind is a very odd easterly wind tonight. So it's blowing in from far side to near side. And just a throw in, excuse me, not a corner for Denver. But just a slight breeze, 8 to 10 miles an hour. Probably not game changing. Roman Knox takes this one away, away and Costa chips it ahead to clear the pressure. Yeah, that was like the Haney clearance earlier. It would have been very, very difficult to connect with Ortiz, who was up there all alone amid four white jerseys. But in that case, you're just trying to get it out of trouble. Matches like this in the preseason, in, if you will, the non-conference schedule, so big for both teams to get that resume built for the NCAA tournament if they don't end up making it automatically. So here comes Ben Smith. He's taken down and a no doubter here as Roman Knox rode his shoulder and took him to the ground for a yellow card. Yeah, it's not unusual when you're chasing a, a player from behind to maybe reach out and tug on his sleeve a little bit, but Roman Knox got a hold of his entire shoulder and yanked him to the ground. There is absolutely no way you could get away without a card on that one. He's trying to make sure that Smith did not get into the area. And this kick will come from just outside the area, about 25 yards out, just to the keeper's left. Going to be about five yards off the left post. And Leland Grant is walking off the 10 yard margin that is supposed to be honored for every free kick. But mm. a moment ago, SMU had a free kick going the other way, and um, one of the uh, one of the pioneers was about three yards out in front of him, and they let it play. Eli Marinus was standing right in front of the shot. From 28 yards, the chip by Fisher. It's played on the ground and saved on the ground by SMU's Cole Johnson. He was looking in the air and then had to get down as it was played on the deck. Yeah, Cole Johnson, both goalies have played well so far. I mean, the shots are fairly equal. Um, SMU actually has a 7-3 advantage in shots. Um, but both goalies have been been clean so far. You can't blame Johnson for the one that went in off of that deflection. It is interesting that it's getting a little more chippy, a little rougher out there. And, now we've got another car, another stoppage of the clock. And we get a look at this last shot off the redirect and a real quick left foot. Appeared to be Trevor Wright. 
put it on goal. I really like the way Leland Grant is handling this. He could start handing out cards just to show that he's the guy in charge, but instead he stops the play when Bailey Sparks got sort of poked in the ankle from behind. And instead of handing out another card, Leland Grant pulls the two captains together and gives them a word, basically saying, tell your teammates, knock it off. Play clean, play the right way. Jog over to the near side by Leland Grant to check with the substitute official. Ryan Gigich holding that position on the near side. Lone goal in this one, Destin Norman, unassisted after a giveaway. And SMU has had a couple chances early in this one. Nothing in quite a while. They did have the opportunity for a blast off of a corner by Brandon Tervega. He was at the top of the six, took a whack at it, went off the crossbar to keep it a 1-0 game. Yeah, as we, we talked in the pregame about how both teams really like to possess, to pass and possess the ball and and you know sort of play keep away effectively uh, especially through the middle third and for the last little while here the Mustangs really haven't been able to string many passes together you've seen Tom Haney and Mads Westergren and Gabe Costa sort of punting it out of the back end just to get it out of traffic which you need to do you need to protect your goal um, but the Mustangs are at their best when they are building uh, through consecutive passes and stringing those together and they really haven't been able to do that uh, which is a credit for the job that the Pioneers have done through defending through the midfield. For Denver, a change at the striker spot as Stefan De Leon goes to the bench, and a freshman from Texas, Round Rock in Central Texas, comes in. O.J. Oforin, part of the Lone Star Soccer Club. A couple of his teammates were as well. And SMU, the number nine team in the nation, down 1 0. Getting close to the intermission here. At SMU, Roman Knox plays it to the outside. To the left wing, Kieran Pino. Knut Ollander coming off a goal for the first time this year. He had one against HBU, dumps it off. Wester Gray finds an open Pino, but Pino is undercut. Ben Smith takes it away. And it's sent into touch by Pino. Yeah, nice job by Pino regrouping. He wasn't able to get possession back, but he also did. At, at the very least, he present, prevented Ben Smith from taking off down the sideline on what could have been a very long run through some open real estate. Incredibly determined Denver team today. They have come in, and we knew it was going to be a heavyweight matchup, and both teams would have to be ready to go to have a chance to win this one. Denver so far has been a little bit better than SMU, and on the scoreboard, they got the giveaway that led to the only goal in this one so far. And a foul coming up against Denver again as Kieran Pino rides around. There'll be yeah, a stoppage here for a spike in the an He went down hard and was immediately screaming and is getting up rather gingerly and looks like he's going to try to walk it off. Yeah, I think uh, on. Lucas Fisher giving chase from behind. Certainly nothing intentional, but I think he sort of stepped on Pino's foot. And if your foot's at an awkward angle and you get one in the ankle or the foot, that can be excruciating. No doubt. Hollander with the left foot to the back post. It sails just a little bit wide on the header. Had a wide open net and could not get it to go. Yeah, that Another was Tom great Haney ball. again. That was... Uh, that's twice now that Ollander and Haney have hooked up with a serve from the left side going to Haney on the back post. And again, Haney is a six foot three defender. Goalie DeSantis was just a step late getting over there. He probably wanted, and the reason he was a little late getting over there was because he ran into his own teammate. Mm. DeSantis got shoulder, sort of bumped off by the shoulder of Trevor Wright, or he may have been able to snatch that out of the air and eliminate the chance before it happened. 
Another good chance for SMU. Nothing on the scoreboard as of yet. SMU chips it out of trouble, at least for now, but Denver keeping some pressure on. The shots right now are eight to four in favor of SMU, but each team has two shots on goal. And really, SMU's best chances so far have not technically been on goal. They've been near goal. Yeah, you're right. But both teams are creating are creating good chances. And, and Denver really presents a very different look than the first two teams SMU has played. You know, Stanford came in here and is a big physical team that tries to sort of bully its opponents. And it works an awful lot. They're very talented and very big and strong. Um, and so you had to compensate for that. And Houston Baptist was a little more of a team that wanted to sit back and wait for a counterattack and catch you sleeping. Um, Denver is is by far the most technical team that SMU has played so far, passing through the midfield a lot and creating a lot of chances. A fun, even matchup so far. Two teams that love to pass and let that create opportunities. Now a corner coming from Lucas Fisher, sophomore out of Portland, Central Catholic High School. And before the start, Push is called, and we're going to restart out in the corner again. Yeah, you had a couple of players jostling for space right in front of Cole Johnson. Leland Grant keeping tight watch on what's happening in front of the keeper. I think it was Aiden O'Toole for Denver, and I believe that's Roman Knox in there. Not the tallest guys in the world, but both very strong. Or no, Pino, I'm sorry. And they were uh, just about throwing each other into the net. Fisher keeps this on the ground for a counter opportunity. The header from the top by O.J. O'Foran goes right in on net. And Cole Johnson squeezes the fairly easy save as there's another stoppage for injury. This time it's a Mustang, Tom Haney, who is going to need to be attended to. Yeah, he's holding his... Did he catch an elbow up in the forehead or something? He's holding his ha hand to his face it's before we could see it there. He certainly thinks so. It's pretty frustrating. And again, if you're an SMU fan, you're getting tired of hearing us call the name Becky Regal this year. I know her family listens to these games and they're like, no, more Becky. Star of the show, Becky Regal. She is, as we have said, she is absolutely critical to the success of this team. And it looks like Tom Haney's going to be just fine. We also commented earlier he no longer wears the protective helmet that he used to wear. So right. if that was up around the head, that might have uh, made him just sort of catch his attention for just a second and make sure everything's okay. But clearly he's fine. He Haney came the center out for all of a second. Haney, the center back out of Houston, yeah, is going to be able to stay in the game. And he likes to be able to play all 90. Chase after the ball to the far side. We roll under four minutes to play in this first half and SMU trying to get back into the contest. Beautiful slide tackle by Knut Ollander. And we talk a lot about Ollander's ability to shoot and pass, but he's a very underrated defender. He's a smart player, hustled hard there and got underneath his opponent, able to knock the ball out and delay or, or erase that scoring chance for the Pioneers, at least for a moment. Wester Grain. Slide, or rather, Trevega slide kicks that one out to the side for SMU. A touch out tough for O'Hira, tries to go across, and there's just nobody home for Denver at this point. Each team has had a couple of chances tonight where there's been a nice serve across the mouth of the goal in, in both cases, up and over the goalie's reach. And had there been a teammate standing at the back post, it might be five to four or something by now. Now, there's certainly been chances on either side. Now shots on goal in favor of Denver, three to two, and up one to nothing on SMU. Powerhouse program, number nine in the country. Off the win over Stanford and the win over HBU. Denver lost early this season. And there's a man down again. It's going to be Tom Haney. And again, Haney that goes was a down. result of a very casual play back pass back by the Mustangs. There have been way too many of those tonight. You see Kevin Hudson on the sideline with his hands behind his head. He has seen several of his players, particularly number three, Tom Haney, 
spending altogether too much time on the field. And again, it looks as though maybe OJ O'Foran just uh, went down right on top of uh, Haney's cleat. Yeah, yeah and on again, the toe I like don't that, think we've hurts. seen a single play where anyone's trying to hurt anybody from either side. No. But two guys arrive at the ball at the same time. Something's got to give. So far, the Denver Pioneers hanging on to this one nothing lead in Dallas. Trying to figure out a way to make sure that that stays that way into the half. Pioneers went six and two back in the spring. Have nine returning starters off that squad, and then nine newcomers as well. Meanwhile, for SMU, they've got a lot of newcomers as well this season, about a dozen of them, including 11 freshmen. One minute, in the first half. One minute in the first half, Denver on top of number nine, SMU, one to nothing. I think if you're the Mustangs, maybe you try to get Bailey Sparks into the offensive attack a little bit more. He's been a very dangerous player in his first couple of games, even coming in off the bench against Stanford in his debut. Uh, the coaches said they weren't sure he wasn't the best player on the field that night. Another penalty, another foul coming up against the Pioneers as Pino goes to, down to the ground. And to that point, Bailey Sparks is the rookie of the week in this league for what he was able to do last week with the assist. My guess is it's not the last time he'll be receiving that honor either. Costa with 10 seconds right back to him. Chance for a final shot? No. It's into the feet of the Pioneers to end the half. So the Denver Pioneers up 1-0 at the break thanks to a Destin Norman goal, the fifth-year starter. Second half, those are the two guys who most readily can reverse this game for SMU, and I think you'll see more and more pressure from Denver swarming number 10 and 11. Well, so far to start the second half, number 11 does not start on the field as Gabe Costa takes a rest in the midfield. Knut Ollander is out there, however. We'll see how this all unfolds as Denver will move right to left and SMU left to right in the second half. Denver securing the one nothing lead thanks to the Destin Norman goal opening his account in the first game he's played this season, his fifth for the Denver Pioneers. I'm John Little with Steve Lansdale and the first of two very tough matches this week for SMU. How do you think that plays into the mind of uh, Kevin Hudson as far as how he thinks about personnel this week? Uh, I think he's very grateful to have a deep team. Um, both Denver and St. Louis, very, very tough opponents. And this year is a little bit more of a compressed schedule. You don't see any, uh, you don't see many, many breaks within the season where a team gets six or seven days to regroup and refresh and regenerate to get ready for the next game. These are quick turnarounds. Every one of them is three or four days, and there are no lightweights on this uh, early part of the schedule. Yeah, four days from now on the 10th, St. Louis coming to town. Meanwhile, for Denver, they've got to make the easy flight back uh, early tomorrow to Denver, not too bad of a flight. And on Friday, they'll have their first home match against Evansville. A run up the near side for Stefan DeLeon, who had a good first half to the edge of the box. DeLeon getting to his right foot and backing away, thanks to the blue shirts. And DeLeon again, there are players who are fast, there are players who are technically gifted. He is both. Mm. And just to watch how calmly he holds the ball right on his foot while he's going a million miles an hour. Um, it's He's a very, very dangerous scoring threat. De Leon really hasn't had an opportunity to rip one on net as of yet. Long ball ahead, and Jose Ortiz is marked by a couple different players there. Ortiz getting physical and picking up the foul. You mentioned a moment ago that Gabe Costa is starting the second half on the bench. The last time he did that, he came in and scored twice against Stanford. It worked the first time. <laughs> it certainly did. Why not do it again? If you're Kevin Hudson, you're sure hoping it happens again. One more foul on SMU as they start to 
ease up the fouls. Right now they're 11 to 8 in favor of the Pioneers. Matchup of two coaches that took over the same year. Back in 2015, Kevin Hudson had his team go 15, 3, and 4 as yet another foul goes on SMU. This time it's the freshman, Bailey Sparks, who helps up Aiden O'Toole in the middle of the field. And for Denver, their head coach also had 15 wins in that first year. Jamie Franks, 15, 1, and 3, and went to the NCAA second round and was the Summit League coach of the year. There's yeah, a run right through the middle of the field. O'Toole feeds it just what? You're talking about the physical play in the midfield, and I think that last foul on Allender notwithstanding, which was sort of a poke at the ankle, um, I think if you're the Mustangs, you, you certainly, look, Kevin Hudson doesn't teach a dirty style of soccer, neither does Jamie Franks, but you've got Bailey Sparks, Lane Warrington, Simon, uh, Skage Simonson, Canute Allender. You've got some big, strong guys in the midfield and up front. And I think if you're the Mustangs, you need to start simply running through some people to track, track down some loose balls and maybe change the way, change the defensive stance for the Pioneers a little bit by using a, a visible size advantage. Roman Knox picking up his first start of the year also starts the second half as it goes up the far side. Right back to the middle. Sparks with the left foot. It rolls just wide. And there's a foul right at the end. It's right near the top of the box. And a yellow card is coming. It is outside the area. So no PK coming. But still, Sparks is uh, okay. down. Eli Marin has got a yellow card. And honestly, he may be lucky that's all he got. Mm. Because he took Sparks' foot out when Sparks was shooting. And he was in a very dangerous wow. spot. His momentum was already swinging through with his left-footed shot, and then Marinus comes in and takes out his right foot. And luckily, Sparks pop, pops right up, and he looks like he's going to be fine, but that was a potentially very dangerous spot. Eli Marinus, who was also recruited by SMU and sports an incredible mullet as well, a very recruitable mullet. Um, a very recruitable mullet? I, I would, uh, you know, not to get too far away from soccer here, but uh, that's what I'm calling it. But... Uh, how do you play this set piece? This is just just outside the box, 19 yards away, just off to the right of the Pioneer keeper, DeSantis. Yeah, and the difference here is that normally you have Gabe Costa as the right-footed shooter up here with Canute Allender. Now you have Harvey Castro. Castro taking it. It's right off the block. Castro settling it down, and it's played away by Denver. Nice defensive play by the Pioneers standing tall. One of the things that Costa does very well, and I realize that's a long list, <laughs> is on free kicks, on restarts, he is able to lift the ball and hook it down over the top of a wall. Castro can do it too. He's just not as proficient at it, and that time he buried it right in the shoulder blades of one of the Denver uh, players who jumped and sort of twisted his back into it. He'd love to get that one back and get a little more elevation, see if he can curl it down toward one of the corners of the goal seems like it would almost be better there to be you know three four yards back though that it might be a little bit of an easier shot to get it over that first way that's true but if you bring the wall the farther you bring the wall back the more you screen your goalkeeper so you will see uh defenders always whether it's on the defensive end of the field or offensive end of the field you'll see them creeping closer and closer and closer and invariably the referee has to step in and tell them to back off and remind them about that 10 yard rule that they've heard about since they started playing the game as a kid. It's a throw in for SMU. He's Steve Lansdale. I'm John Little. We've got a really good one going here in Dallas on the campus of SMU. Nearly a, a windless night now on this September evening. We started at 91 degrees. We're down to 89 now. We've had a lot of humidity in the air early September, but not right now. Here's a long throw in by Warrington to the middle of the box. Sparks settles it down, and with the left foot, he is blocked away, and it's clear by De Leon. Nice try by Bailey Sparks trying to one-time that off of a short hop. He had an angle, and, a, and from here at least, it looked like he had some space on the left side of the goal. But that is a very, very difficult shot to get off and control. It's sort of like hitting a moving ball with a with a golf club. That thing's going to go sky high if you hit it at all. Meanwhile, powerful throw in by Warrington. Warrington's throw ins are, you know, they're the 
it, it, they're the stuff of fables. Children, children's books have been written about Lane Warrington throw-ins. Well, you know, every now and then you see a team that has a guy, has a player who can do one of those flip throw-ins. Right. Which are dazzling to the fans and even to the players because they look cool and they're kind of unusual. And usually it leads to a line drive throw that goes halfway across the field. It's also easy to mess those up and not have them on target. And Warrington has a similar delivery without the benefit, the, the theatrics of the flip. He can get a very long, low line drive, sort of a corkscrew motion on the ball. And it's really a weapon. It's almost like an extra corner kick if you're in the last, let's say, 20 yards of the field. He can get it in front of the goal and give his teammates a chance. We'll get another chance to see it here for number 14. He's Lane good enough that he comes from the right side of the field all the way over to the left to do the throw-ins over there. Exactly. Warrington out of Lawton, Oklahoma, the senior. Came up with an assist in the last game. The long throw-in to the middle, and it's just wide. Simonson is able to settle it down to the right foot, and as he twisted his head around, he sends it past the post. Really nice effort by Skage Simonson. As you said, dropping it. He almost had to sort of catch that with his left foot um, and drop it and turn while he's got a defender hanging on his left hip. Awfully difficult chance, and he almost got it on frame. Still the perfect night for DeSantis, who has faced two shots on goal. SMU as a team out shooting this Denver team 10 to 5. Denver has picked up their second goal of the season. Off the foot of Destin Norman, the ball that was tipped in the box by defender Thomas Haney and passed the keeper, Cole Johnson. You see the offside flag go up on the far side. The Pioneers have done a really nice job so far of what we talked about in the pregame, making SMU shoot from distance. The majority of the Mustangs' shots have been 15, 18, 20 yards out or more. And with a goalkeeper as gifted as Will DeSantis, um, you know, that's just playing, so to speak, right into his hands. It has been so far. Bailey Sparks in the middle, sends it right past Brandon Tervega, the left back. So Denver, every time a little something goes their way, we're a little bit closer to them than we are the SMU bench. But, uh, you know, they're very into this game and ready to help their team win it even if they're not in the contest. You're right. The Pioneers have been very vocal um, and as you said, very sort of invested in the game and um, you know, eventually that kind of enthusiasm can wear off and can give some of the guys on the field a boost, especially after you've been out there running for 50 or 60 or 80 minutes. Jamie Franks calls their brand of football fighting football. Says it takes a team first mentality to get things done. They've been acclimating the freshmen into that. It's paid dividends with the win at Portland, 1-0, and they're trying to get some kind of similar victory here against a top-10 team. But SMU has the firepower to turn it around. There is no doubt about that. This is headed out of trouble by Liam Johnson, the center back. The Mustangs stay on possession and try to attack. It'll be interesting to see when Gabe Costa and Papa Hindoy get brought in off the bench. Seems like the Mustangs sort of still sorting out where to go as their top targets. Skage Simonson has certainly been one of them. Warrington's drive to the top, a little off target, but it's sent right back to him. And he's able to knock it down for Westergrain, who attacks a bit. Tries to go all the way across, play back into the air. Castro able to settle it down for a moment. That's an awfully difficult pass that Westergren tried to make there, a line drive across maybe three-fourths across the way, across the field, and through some traffic areas with some white jerseys. Be very, very difficult to thread that through, and the Pioneers were able to pick it off. Lester Graham, the freshman from Denmark. He's been trusted in a starting role for SMU. SMU's had 10 opportunities. Couple of them on goal so far. Denver, five shots, three of them on goal tonight. And one has gone in. John Little with Steve Lansdale. Evidently, yes, that is into touch off of Warrington. 
who gives a little bit of a smile as he hands the ball back over to his opponent. He knew it. He yep. was trying to head upfield, but he knew exactly that the whistle was coming. <laughs> Warrington with that easy smile as a couple players come on for Denver for the first time in the second half. Ben Smith. Back in, Kingo O'Hara is out. Griffin Meyer out as well. And Dustin Norman is also in for the first time in the second half, along with O.J. O'Fordern, as Denver is the first team to make a substitution in the second half. Skage Simonson got his little bit tangled up. I think he and Lane Warrington were trying to connect on a, an overlap there. and. Uh, just weren't on the same page, and Skage Simonson ended up dribbling out of bounds. This one driven back out by the steady center back, Thomas Haney. Denver pressuring once more. Out of their own end, Sparks is dispossessed. Nice job by Dustin Norman stepping forward. Sparks was waiting on that ball, and then just started to turn to head up field. Turned a little too quickly. Goal scorer Norman out in the corner. And it's off of Norman. Jamie Frank says just had a, a wealth of success with Denver. Four times he's been named the Summit League Coach of the Year and the year that his team made it onto the College Cup back in 2016. They were the national coaching staff of the year as well. Ended on to the semifinals that season before falling as Simonson moves it through the middle for SMU. The Mustangs down one nothing here in Dallas. And there's certainly been some pressure. Chances just haven't gone home. Get a look at Jamie Franks there. Simonson to the top. Castro tries to slip it inside and it's just beyond the reach of Jose Ortiz. There's some contact there as Will DeSantis came out to grab it. DeSantis ends up being fallen upon. And there's also the very aggressive SMU Mustang coming in as well. Yeah, it was Castro came racing in hoping for a rebound. He's the one who threaded it through. And he was, oof. And they both took DeSantis the DeSantis certainly didn't do anything wrong. He got to the ball first. He swallowed it up. And, um, you know, a lot of times, if you breathe on the goalkeeper, a card will come out. So Castro's lucky for that. And most importantly, he's lucky that nobody was hurt. Absolutely, because he got a mouthful of uh, the ground as well. And SMU called for a handball here for a Denver restart near midfield. Long ball into the box. A couple touches off the head, and it's volleyed out by Thomas Haney. Good job by Haney to stay with that one and big bodied Haney keeping it away from OJ O'Foran. I think Haney was a little bit frustrated that when he went up to get his head on that ball, he got bumped just a hair and therefore he wasn't able to control it quite as well. And as it got out of bounds, he took aim at the upper level of that parking garage on the north end of the field. And there a little are frustration coming out. Absolutely. The fans there hoping to get a souvenir. It will end up being a corner. So he was trying to rip it out to the side and let it be a throw in, but instead a corner is coming and there will be a stoppage here. Yeah, referee Nolan Grant has done a pretty good job all night of listening to the objections from players on both sides, but Coach Franks is clearly hot about something. And again, taking the time to talk him down rather than handing out a card. a long discussion between Jamie Franks and Leland Grant. As Denver continues to look for calls here late in this contest. We've got half the Mustangs jammed in there on the goal line. Aiden O'Toole with the corner to the far post in the air and it's knocked out. It's going to be another corner. So it went off of a Mustang, and Denver gets a corner from the opposite side that O'Toole will take. That sure looked like it went off the head of Trevor Wright to me. There may have been a Mustang right behind him who got to it. 
And now you see a different stance by the Pioneers with all their players crowded out between the 12 yard penalty spot and the top of the top of the box and at the approach on this you'll see a jailbreak and, and that one is Haney. low down to the ground Haney plays it out easily meanwhile in a few moments SMU will come back with some of their best offensive players as Costa waits to check in along with Papa Endoy. It's an interesting decision to let them sit this long in uh, in a game where you're trailing. But what it does is it brings them in fresh while the Denver defenders have been running for the last 15 minutes chasing Ortiz and the rest of the Mustangs in the offensive ends. So now you're going to have two of the most dangerous weapons for SMU coming in well rested and uh, certainly fully intent on creating some more scoring chances. Simonson in the middle has eyes on Warrington, but that is headed away. That will give number nine SMU the opportunity to bring in their striker, Papa Endoy, and the creative midfield player and captain, Gabriel Costa. Costa is in. Bailey Sparks takes a seat. And the striker position, of course, Jose Ortiz will come out for Papa Endoy. 28 minutes left. SMU down by one. Denver with the goal in the first half. Costa with his first touch. And here's a chip. Far post to Endoy. And his header is a diving stop by Denver's Will DeSantis laying out to get the very good header that was on target by Papa Endoy and keep it from nodding it up. A yeah, brilliant play by DeSantis there laying out to swallow that one up. Gabe Costa was able to split a couple of uh, Denver defenders and he found Roman Knox who had the serve to the back post and Endoy did a nice job trying to play it to a lower corner rather than just nodding it right into the hands of, uh, of DeSantis. Good play by Endoy, better play by DeSantis. DeSantis standing on his head after giving up three goals including a penalty kick in the opening match. He has been perfect ever since. Clean sheets all the way around. Now a little bit of a counterattack by Destin Norman and company. Norman plays it across in front. And a nice job to slide it away with the left foot. Thomas Haney, it seems like, has been near every big play in this one, uh, whether it be positive or negative for SMU. He has. Haney has been out in front on restarts, out in front on, uh, on corner kicks. He's the guy who goes up with over the crowd to head the ball out and he didn't fully block that shot he deflected it again and from this angle it almost looked like he was going to have a second one deflected on frame off of his leg brooks crawford comes on for stefan de leon that one kicked away by smu the pioneer restart on a throw in clock yeah, runs with about 26 minutes he's been very very strong tonight I know he's heartbroken about the, b the ball that bounced off his leg and, and snuck behind Johnson, but overall, Haney's played very well. Oh, I completely agree. This one again is off Costa and again off SMU. Now, where would SMU be in this one without their senior leader, Haney? Denver looking to make it a two goal lead. But that one on the little tic-tac-toe has played a little bit beyond the reach of Ben Smith by Eli Marinus. And again, the Pioneers high, pressing high in the offensive end, trying to force the Mustangs into some errors in the back and have forced a few tonight. And only, you know, and the Mustangs have gotten away with them so far. But that, uh, that can be playing with fire. They're going to have to be as crisp as possible with some of these passes, both out of the back and across the back, trying to find space and find openings. First foul in a little while. This one committed by Knut Ollander, the senior out of Norway, the pre-season All-American Athletic Conference pick. Denver protecting the lead and trying to do a little bit better than that as that foul is going to end up going on the Pioneers. Yeah, Eli Marin has called for a bit of a hip check there on Gabe Costa. 
And honestly, if I'm Jamie Franks, I'm not upset at all about that foul because if Costa had gotten the ball, there was a lot of room. Not that he was going to go coast to coast with it, but he was able he would have been able to carry it through and find some space and find some passing options. Castro on the far side. Playing it to the middle of the Roman Knox, who has gotten nearly the whole game. Now Costa, not much space. He's marked by a couple players and Bit of an overplay by Denver's defender Trevor Wright. Costa takes a spill and will line up a free kick. You know, I've commended Leland Grant a couple of times tonight for his ability to maintain some control when it's gotten chippy without handing out cards. But he's also been very picky about lining up on throw ins and spots, telling people to back up six feet or something like that when you're. 40 yards away from goal. Hollander with the left foot to the back post. It's played on the ground and out, and it's off of Denver for a corner. And this time you do have Gabe Costa, your right-footed restart free kick specialist over there. He missed the last, he was uh, sitting on the bench for the last one. Hmm. Really tough to see there. That was a couple of uh, feet in the air. Really tough to tell who it went on on. But it is going to be, there's going to need to be a substitution here as the Mustangs have a player that was down for a moment. Costa was, or rather, excuse me, it's uh, Harvey, Harvey Castro. Castro who is having trouble getting off the field, maybe with a, a shoulder issue of some sort. Luckily, they've got the defender of the week in the American Athletic Conference to bring in as Kieran Pino is back onto the field. Yeah, but Castro is a significant piece of the puzzle for the Mustangs and you know the, Mus the coaches always talk about the value of depth and he is certainly a key part of that. And yep. now you've got three Mustangs out near the top of the box, but Denver's got basically an entire team picture right in front of the goal. Gabriel Costa from the corner. To the middle. And in the air, it's secured by Will DeSantis. Really nice job by DeSantis on that because he had Skage Simonson standing right in front of him. Simonson, who's listed at 6'3 and, what, 190 pounds. And if he's not the biggest guy on the field, he sure is close to it. And DeSantis read that and was able to get around him and snatch that ball cleanly. Really nice play. It'll never show up in the box score. But terrific play by Will DeSantis. SMU really wanted a handball. None comes. And so Denver stays on possession, at least for now. Knox trying to be really aggressive, and he gets it back to Simonson to start something for SMU. Good job by Roman Knox just to be pesky in this one, and now Knox is taken down in the back. Meanwhile, I don't think SMU wanted that. Yeah, you see Kevin Hudson in the Mustang bench. They really wanted the officials to play the... Uh, play the advantage there because that ball came over to the near side to Gabe Costa with room to run. They say, do you know who number 11 is? <laughs> that much room and Kevin Hudson. Kevin Hudson can't even look at Leland Grant who is communicating to Kevin Hudson that uh, he, Hudson's been politicking for calls like that the entire game. And that is, you know, that is a call that is at the official's discretion. Sure. If it looks like a player may have been hurt or if it looks like it was particularly egregious or intentional, or, and I'm certainly not trying to read the mind of Leland Grant, but you hear every coach, every player talk about play the, play the advantage. If there's a foul whistled and you're against the opponent and your team gets the ball, more often than not, they will let you continue playing. And that is obviously what Kevin Hudson and the staff of the Mustangs was hoping would happen in that instance. The whistle came a little bit more quickly than the Mustangs were hoping. Yet another restart opportunity here for SMU. From this distance, Knut Allender will take it. As we roll under 22 minutes to play in Dallas. Pioneers have led since early on. Played on the ground. Pino takes it into the box to the back post, and it is headed back out by the defense. Endoy had another opportunity. Meanwhile, SMU is screaming for a call in the box as Westergrain went down. I wonder if they were also looking for a handball, but it, I think it was a clean header off the line. I didn't see the defender who did it 
I think it was Trevor Wright. And if so, there's your play of the game. It was past DeSantis. Uh, now I'm being told it's Lucas Russo who got the header. Um, the ball had gotten past DeSantis. And if Russo's not there, we're looking at an even game with 21 minutes to go. And the action in front of the Pioneer net. It's been astounding. Several opportunities for SMU. That's the second header chance for Endoy since he's come back in. One was a diving stop to keep it from becoming a tie game by DeSantis. And this last one had to be a, de a defender to take that header. And the physicality is definitely picking up as well. Numbers for SMU. Simonson off to Costa. Costa playing to the left foot. Stops on a dime into the box. Simonson has it blocked again by the defense. My goodness, what a play. And a yellow card coming here against SMU in the I think attacking that's being box. given to Costa, who did a great job hitting the brakes. Here's the previous one. Okay, it was Trevor Wright who had the save off the back line, and there he hits the brakes. He sits two players down. Wow. Gets across into the middle. And Trevor Wright Wright didn't was see there. what the yellow card was for. Costa came in, slid, missed the ball by three feet. There certainly wasn't any contact on that. I don't know if maybe he said something, but Costa comes away with a yellow card after a very dangerous chance for SMU. SMU's starting to buzz here, though. There's some feeling that they are lurking. Has there been a difference in play in your mind here recently? Well, it's yeah, SMU I think they're throwing more numbers forward, which you have to do when you're trailing with 20 minutes left. Costa's playing with a little more of an offensive stance. Simonson is pushing forward, so the two of them are up front with Papa Endoy, almost like it's a three-man front line. And But, you know, those midfielders, Simonson, Costa, are going to have to do miles of running. They're going to have to retreat when the situation calls for it. But yes, SMU is definitely pushing into a more aggressive stance uh, in search of that equalizer. SMU hadn't trailed in the second half of a match yet this year. They were knotted up with Stanford, but came up with the two goals from Costa. Man, that is quite a run there, and a foul is coming against Denver as Sage Simonson went down hard, and any time six foot three and about 200 pounds goes to the deck, it creates a rumble. Yeah, Simonson went down hard, and now we have a yellow card again coming out, this time to... Um, This is going to be a uh, yellow Brooks Crawford. Yeah, Brooks Crawford, who came in for Stefan De Leon a little earlier. It was interesting when Simonson went down, Lane Warrington ran after the loose ball. DeSantis came over as if he was going to grab the loose ball as, wa as well. And Warrington gave him a little bit of a shove. Well, DeSantis is wearing yellow, so it looked like he shoved an official. There is a lot going on in this second half as SMU tries to strike Denver alertly playing team defense to keep SMU out of the net. You've and got now, about 20 players right outside the six yard box and it's gonna be a wrestling match. Ollander to the back post, how good is this ball? Not good enough, but a foul on SMU in the box once again. Yeah, and take your guess who that foul right. was on because there were about 10 players in 10 square feet. And the Pioneers survive Yet another chance for SMU. Mustangs, of course, you have to be shut out this year. Had three goals in each of their first two matches. Gabriel Costa responsible for four of those. He's, of course, been held off the scoreboard along with their striker, Endoy. He's had a couple nice header opportunities in the second half. Can they find that one magic rush? to get the game tied and think about taking the lead. Here's a creative play by Pino, the freshman. Snapping it in front to the back post. It's knocked away, but settled down. Here's Costa. Costa trying to flip it to himself, and it's poked out near midfield. Yeah, you're absolutely right. Costa was trying to flip it over Crawford to himself. Now, Crawford's about six inches taller than Costa, 
And I don't know of anyone who flips a ball to himself better than Costa, and he was about an inch short of pulling it off there. And a run for Endoy. That one's headed down, right to Costa. Plays it over to Ollander, back to Costa in the middle. Slips it to Simonson. Out to the near side. Warrington with a chance. SMU on possession. Costa tries to put on the brakes again. Repossesses. Warrington to set it up. Plays it down for Ollander again. Great playmaker. Joining the rush. Defender now. In Westergrain. Costa. Right back to Warrington once more. He drives it into the box. Headed away to the top of the 18. Costa might have a chance on it. He goes down trying to draw a call. Nothing yet. It stays with SMU chipped in and easily played by DeSantis. Yeah, good read by DeSantis seeing that ball uh, headed maybe 10 yards wide of the left goal post, but more importantly, Kieran Pino racing in from the left side. And DeSantis got off his line to snatch that. A lot of fun in the second half, Steve. It is. Intense soccer for being September right now. <laughs> it's very intense soccer, and, and part of the intensity is because on that last possession for SMU, all 11 Pioneers were in the defensive third. Usually a team will leave one or two guys up near midfield or even across the midfield line, but uh, Jamie Franks and his staff doing everything possible to protect this one goal lead for, for his Denver team. All the best offensive players in for SMU. This one driven on the ground and flicked away. Knut Ollander trying to drive it, but is well wide on his attempt from about 12 yards out, trying to go to the opposite post. And Ollander's going to see that one in his dreams because he got a pass in the middle, was able to settle it, and he about had about the left third of the line of the goal wide open. And he just got a little too close to it, so the ball got sort of stuck under his feet. And all he could do would be pull out the pitching wedge and send it over the end line. And you saw the reaction from Ollander as he just sort of crumpled to his knees for a minute in disbelief. Meanwhile, for Denver, what is the thought here as obviously SMU is trying to keep the pressure on? What is the talk? What is the chatter? How do they keep it from going into the goal? Well, it's with 15 minutes left. It's still far too early to play stall ball You're not going to see the pioneers grabbing the ball and just heading to the corner flag and taking up residence over there yet That may come in the last minute if if that's the way that uh, coach Franks opts to go But if you're the pioneers you take the safe smart play Always if you don't have a wide open pass put it into the seats, put it into the street, over the fence, knock it into the parking garage if you have to. The worst that can happen is you regroup and you start again. And in the meantime, if you send one into the street, you also burn some seconds off the clock. You're at 14 and a half minutes left, and the last thing you want to do uh, is make any kind of critical mistake. The corner by Costa off the restart is just too strong, and Westergrain going one for one is the one to knock it away. As Denver's Ronan win defensively, the right back out of Auckland, New Zealand, played it pretty well. And if it's not hard enough to play catch up against a very good Denver team, now De Leon is back in the game and fresh and rested. And now you've got to chase him, who not only is a guy who can score, but he's a guy who can get into the offensive third and cause a lot of, of uh, headaches for the SMU defense. Do you think that changes the way that Kevin Hudson aligns his team right now, or is he still just as aggressive as he's been in the last 10 minutes? I think he has to be, but it just puts extra strain on that back three of Haney and Trevega and Westergren um, because De Leon is just a nightmare. Ooh, that's flicked inside, and Doy with the goal! Simonson backflipped it right over to Endoy with the left foot, and SMU has knotted it up with a brilliant team play. And that's got to feel so good for Endoy. Obviously, everyone in blue was looking for the equalizer, but he has had chance after chance after chance. And a couple of them, he just didn't get enough on a header or he got bumped off the ball. And now he stays patient. It's a beautiful pass by Skage Simonson to flick it with his heel. 
and Endoy tucks it into the far lower left corner. Beautiful shot by Endoy, but I think that play is made on that gorgeous pass by Simonson. Ollander finds Skage, Simonson, and Simonson, as big as he is, he is equally as just creative and brilliant with the football in his feet. He can play Papa with an Endoy. awful lot of finesse for a mm. guy who looks like he could also play outside linebacker. He, he looks like a center sometimes in basketball where they play through the high post, you know? Mm -hmm. a, a, a tall, skilled player at the top of the key that you want. you can shoot a three or Absolutely. you throw a backdoor pass. Yeah, same kind, of, same kind of play. But he's also big and strong enough that he can run through some folks if he has to. But a brilliant assist. Endoy buries it for his second goal of the season. And SMU's feeling a lot better, but here comes Denver. Denver trying to strike right back. And this drive by De Leon is bounced on goal, where Cole Johnson takes it in. And De Leon's shot again deflected off of Tom Haney. This could be a nightmare for Haney. He's had three shots that have deflected off of him and on goal. And fortunately for him, only one has gone in. And as someone who used to play defense, mm -hmm. it is the most paralyzing feeling when that happens because it just feels like everything's going in slow motion and you look at your keeper saying, please get there, get there, get there, get there. And Cole Johnson was up to it and, and caught the rebound or the directed, redirected shot there. And SMU do it again. Costa, top of the box, right foot. It is deflected out to the corner of the 18 and caught up with by Will DeSantis. DeSantis, who has played a marvelous game, does have one go past him. But look at the shots now, Steve. 14 to 5 in favor of SMU. Yeah, the Mustangs, well, part of that is a reflection of the fact that the Mustangs have been playing catch up and sure. throwing everything forward. And Denver took a very defensive stance for about, what, 20 minutes there? And so the Pioneers were content to sit back, protect that lead. And had it worked, you'd still see all 11 white jerseys in front of its own goal. Now that now that the game's been equalized, uh, you see them come back into a more traditional, more balanced stance. Um, it's not like SMU hasn't had chances. And as you said earlier in the first half, there have been a bunch of shots that have been just a little bit off frame. That number could be more lopsided than it is. Um, but again, both goalkeepers have been really good. I think DeSantis has been maybe the player of the match so far. Costa had a mind to chip it to the middle, but gives it away. The Pioneers will have it back and trying to attack. It's been a long time since the Pioneers have had an outstanding chance. SMU's got to watch for a counter against a very talented offensive team. The team that may be ready to break out, having only scored two goals in three matches so far this season. And again, Denver has some fresh legs. De Leon's only been in for a couple of minutes. A.J. Francois came in off the bench just a moment ago. Um, O'Hara's back in as well, number 91. O'Hara's back as well. And, and he's a guy that the Mustangs were very concerned about going into this game, even though he came in, to, came in as a reserve. He's a very dangerous attacking player as well, and quick, really quick. No doubt about it. O'Hara had a three goals last season in just six games back in the spring, including two game winners. So you have to watch out for him. Pioneers leading almost the entire night, thanks to the goal by Dustin Norman. But SMU able to tie it up on a beautiful play. Canute Ollander slipping it to Skage Simonson, a one touch. Flicking it back behind him to Papa Endoy, who buries it to the far post. And that beautiful play brings SMU to even. And we still have 10 minutes left to play to see if either team can avoid, can bury one to avoid overtime. You've made a couple of comments tonight about how vocal the Denver bench has been. Right. Uh, more so than the SMU bench. Well, now the Denver bench is pretty quiet. And the 14 to 5 shots advantage. Oh, look at Endoy. Endoy taken down. He does get a shot just wide of the goal. There is no game changing call here from Leland Grant. He does not choose to pull out the whistle in the box here. No, but every referee on the SMU bench certainly was ready to pull out the whistle. And, you know, as we've said before, Kevin Hudson is not a vocal coach. 
who yells and screams at officials. That's just not his personality and his demeanor. And he was livid after that non-call. How about the effort of Endoy, though, to run up the back of the defender? Not much contact there by him as he was able to alertly slip it on goal. I think Papa Endoy and Gabe Costa both have made their coach look really smart for bringing him in off the bench after 15 minutes because they have been running wild in the offensive third, especially Endoy. He's been everywhere. And um, he's caused a lot of headaches for the mm -hmm. Denver defense. Warrington picking up a yellow card here. And that must be as uh, Aiden O'Toole is having a tough time getting up and maybe from contact there. Some people refer to that as a card for dissent, I think. He may have shared an opinion a, bit, a little too vigorously. No easy smile right now for Lane Warrington. Tense no, moments for SMU. No, he argue the call either. No, he didn't. Well, if you get a yellow card and argue, you're almost begging for another, yeah. so. Might change colors on you real quick. Right. Ball played in the air by Warrington with the head. Slipped forward by SMU. Simonson used that heel to feed Endoy for a goal a moment ago and now feeds it off of Aiden O'Toole and into touch with under nine to play in regulation here at SMU on a, a fun night. Two teams that have a great chance of being in the tournament at the end of the season. After and watching this is, tonight, you want to see both of them. Absolutely you do. And they're two very talented teams that play the right way. And uh, these are the kind of games you want to see in November. Allender eyes Warrington, but it's just too strong. With Warrington's wheels, you got to give it a ride to outrun him. But the point is taken. It was a tough spring for both of these teams. Sure. Denver, 6-2, and two, but they couldn't play in the tournament because of COVID. SMU starts out 3-0. They've got number one rankings, you know, they were thinking that this team is the next coming. But uh, what was really coming was injuries and COVID-19, which made things really tough. Quick restart by Denver. Trying to figure out a way to regain the lead. Nice little flick back to the corner. An attacking left foot cross is way too strong. A.J. Francois, the freshman out of Austin, got underneath it. Yeah, and the Mustangs are pretty lucky. The uh, ball played back to Cole Johnson. He came out and tried to one-time it upfield and simply shanked it off the side of his foot, giving Denver a throw in about 25 yards off the goal line. But uh, Mustangs able to escape that. And a lot of the Mustangs were caught upfield, it appeared, as well. Warrington ahead of the play, but onside. Warrington settles it down. The senior out of Oklahoma plays it back to a freshman. Wester Grain into the foot of Haney. Haney gives one a ride to the far side. Pino can't figure out where the ball is, and now he finds it. Pino, the active player. Pino attacking. Pino on the right foot now, slips it back. Costa leans into one, and it's blocked right now, but Costa has it back. Costa dangerously out in front, but it's flicked away, at least for now. Westergrain, right off to Warrington. SMU hunting the lead after tying it up, thanks to Endor. Warrington near the sideline. Chips that one into the air. Endoy is there with the bicycle kick, and it goes off the top of the goal. A crossbar away from a momentous brace by Papa Endoy. I assume if he had connected on that, you would have just about swallowed your microphone. Beautiful effort by Papa Endoy. And DeSantis was frozen, as goalies often are, on bicycles. I mean, he got headed over in the right direction, but he wasn't going to get to it. Beautiful take by Endo, and with that top spin, just a couple inches too high from an unbelievable, what would have been an unbelievable go-ahead goal. This has been great, and now Denver with the rush themselves. It opens up. 
Ohira plays it outside to Francois. Right back to Ohira, who gives it away. And now here's Costa running it ahead. See about the play here. Endoy trying to avoid a foul as it's chipped back up the field by the Pioneers. Good play by Trevor Wright. And you're absolutely right. Endoy literally hit the brakes and wanted to show that there was absolutely no contact. Because remember, he's already playing with a yellow card. Great point. Costa in between two players. Now three. Costa, a wizard. Off to Skage Simonson with a little bit of space. To the corner to Pino. Slips it down. Simonson in the box now. Simonson wheels around. Simonson still on it with that big body protecting the ball and has it chipped out. He really is. That's probably the best example tonight from Skage Simonson of using that big frame of his, sort of like a power forward boxing out in the low post. Well, that's what he was doing. He had a defender on his hip and uh, who was unable to get anywhere near the ball because Skage Simonson is so big and had such good control. SMU's played in the attacking third a lot here in the second half, including the tying goal by Endoy. Can they avoid overtime? This one's out of play. And SMU, the throw-in, and you know how adept Warrington is at these off the sideline. A.J. Francois lobbying for a Denver throw, but even he knew that wasn't the case. He didn't lobby very hard. Warrington with four minutes left. A key play. His throw near post, headed in the air and well over the top yeah, on the touch T by Vega got ahead on it. Yeah, you're bringing the defenders down again. Well, again, you've got three defenders with considerable size in Tervega and and uh, Westergren, and then of course Haney at six three in the middle. All three of them become offensive targets. So on, on restarts, throw-ins, corner kicks. So when you bring them up, you have to bring guys like Roman Knox, uh, Pino back into cover for them in the space that they vacated. Denver with dangerous players though too. And the Pioneers still exploring the attacking third and looking for a go ahead goal. Three minutes left. Tom Haney stops it for a moment, but right back on the attack, Francois, Francois slipping past Warrington, has it blocked, Warrington back on it. And Warrington, has it go off of Francois and out a nice assist to slide over Mads Westergrain helped attack as well. A bunch of the pioneers were screaming for a whistle as Warrington got a fistful of Francois jersey inside the box and by the letter of the law they were right. You know that is a violation but at this point with two and a half minutes left of a tie game you're going to have to throw someone down and maybe throw them into the goal to get that whistle. Costa. Leaves it middle, off for Allender. Slips it right back. And here comes Skage Simonson. Off to Costa. Costa flicks it in front. Back post, it's headed away. And off to the near side, where O'Hara clears it into the SMU bench. Nice catch by assistant coach Michael King on the SMU sideline. Tired players looking for a quick restart and a goal. The skill of SMU another outstanding chance now out shooting this Denver team 18 to 6 that one's into the box Endoy can't secure it though and it's poked out nice job by Liam Johnson the three four-year starter and team captain nice job by Endoy almost catching the ball on his thigh but wasn't able to tee it up for a shot another throw in coming from Warrington in pressure moments now with a minute and a half left A lot of composure from Warrington as he quietly grabs a towel and is drying his hands on to get a good throw here because he knows this is a critical chance with 80 seconds left. There's no doubt it is for the senior. You get a good view at it. Warrington efforts it into the box. It's tipped once and twice. Played down and out of play as Haney tried to catch up with it with the right foot. We talked a moment ago about the defense, the defenders who get brought up to be targets. Westergren is the one who got the head on it, and then Haney is the one who had the follow-up shot. The SMU Mustang defenders are very much part of the offense in the final minute of this game. You see the double number two, Liam Johnson in there to head it out once more. And then the 5'9", 160-pound, undersized center back uh, flexes 
after the stop. Yeah, he may be undersized height-wise. He's a sturdy guy. Oh, no doubt. And he holds his ground, and he's an outstanding player. Quick restart by Denver. 30 seconds left in the second half. So this one goes out off of Denver. And it appears we're looking at overtime and an extra at least 10 minutes here in Dallas. Yeah, Cole Johnson had an opportunity to, to tee it up and maybe try to send a long ball upfield for one final rush, but he strolled out to that six yard line, took a look over his left shoulder at the uh, scoreboard up there. And honestly, I think it's kind of appropriate that this game goes to overtime. Both teams have played very, very well for the majority of the evening. And it has been, the shot total notwithstanding, it has been a pretty even match. I don't think uh, overtime is an unjust uh, space to be right now. So Denver in the white kit, SMU in the blue. Denver scoring in the first half. Destin Norman, SMU in the second half on a beautiful blast by Papa Endoy. Endoy almost had the go ahead as well on a bicycle kick that hit the crossbar. An amazing uh, display of athleticism by Endoy, who dumps it over to Costa. Costa with the on rush to Canu down to Endoy again. Endoy has a man in front. It's poked into the air and taken away by Will DeSantis. Some good sharing on the rush between Skage Simonson and Papa Endoy. And Endoy, I think, is lobbying to uh, try to get a corner out of that, saying the ball went out of bounds and came back in. Mm. But obviously, Leland Grant, the official tonight, did not agree with him. Early opportunity in overtime for SMU. They continue to have the will offensively better job by Denver's anyway. defense though there have been a couple times tonight when Papa Endoy or Knut Ollander got very deep up against the uh, up against the goal line and was able to play it back to a teammate this time Endoy was hemmed in by about three Denver defenders he had no choice but to try to just blast it through them somehow and the ball went up turnover to Denver so a sound play by Denver on the defensive end now they try to see if somebody offensively can create a spark. Stefan DeLeon was overpressuring as the freshman punched it out for SMU. And on the restart, the Pioneers trying to end this one. This one goes into the box. The top of the six, a leaning grab by Cole Johnson, who has started this season 2-0 to even his career mark at 4-4-1 after going 2-4-1 in the abbreviated spring season. Yeah, Cole Johnson has done a pretty good job through the first, I guess we can say, three full games so far this year, although the third one isn't complete, but three 90-minute games so far. Um, he's been a nice fill-in. You know, Shane Lanson was thought to be perhaps the starter, got hurt, and uh, Cole Johnson's done a pretty nice job. A foul here on Denver as Knut Ollander is not down. Early in this first overtime, Again, it's a sudden end situation. Goal by either squad. Ends it after yeah, 10 playing minutes. Playing overtime is weird because on the one hand, it's a 10-minute period. And as you said, the first goal ends it. But on the other hand, this guy's been running for 90 minutes. So it's a nice idea to say, okay, we're going to come out and end this quickly with a furious burst up the field. But there's a lot of tired legs out here tonight. No don't doubt about it. I know it's not as hot as the first two games of the year, but it's still, there's a lot of mileage on these legs. SMU last played on Thursday. It's been about a week, meanwhile, for Denver. This one's chased to the far side and kept in by Denver, but Skage Simonson tracks it down and then is fouled as well. And a yellow card coming, two, on Dustin Norman, fifth-year starter picking up his first yellow card of the night interesting call because the contact between Norman and Simonson was minimal Simonson didn't fall and you know if he came in spikes up okay maybe you blow the whistle but to hand out a card in that situation seems a little generous by Leland Grant on his third foul of the night and again we've got a wrestling match going on on the top of the 18 and now the jailbreak toward goal Costa has it headed back out. Costa is able to play it back to Pino. And SMU 
at least stay in control of it as Roman Knox, who has played the entire night, clears it all the way up the field and into the waiting arms of Will DeSantis. Yeah, I think he was looking at Skage Simonson and thought Simonson was going to break toward the goal. And uh, Simonson didn't get the memo. Players that have played the whole match for SMU, Mads Westergrain, along with Thomas Haney, Brandon Tervega. So the back line, along with another one of those pretty much extra defenders at the back of the diamond, basically, there, Roman Knox in the midfield for SMU. Yeah, exactly. Knox is listed as a midfielder but and has played forward a little bit, but basically he has played that central defensive midfielder role all night and played it quite well. Four players also going the whole way for Denver as of this point. Trevor Wright again on the defensive side. Aiden O'Toole along with Liam Johnson, their captain, and Ronan Wynn as well. I think Wynn and, and Wright in particular have done a really nice job on the defensive end for the Pioneers tonight. An offering by Johnson, by Johnson sails into touch. Midway point of this first overtime. And let's be honest, with 19 shots, I think you can point to the entire Denver defense and commend them on the effort. You're absolutely right. And an offside 19 shots, ball. only one of which has ended up in the net. Offside yeah, call offside here about 45 yards off the goal line, <laughs> which is not something you see very often. Not at all. This one's dumped down. Costa plays it over to Knox. Costa trying to get creative with it, but overshoots Pino. And Pino is able to win it back. SMU has played in the attacking third for a lot of the second half and now here in overtime trying to do the same and it looked as though an elbow was able to come up and clip Kieran Pino certainly Kieran Chambron Pino the defender of the week in the American Athletic Conference feels that that was the case that he took one in the nose but we'll just play on nice job by Costa Denver had the ball at the time the whistle was blown, and when the whistle was blown to check on, on Pino, good sportsmanship by Costa to give the ball back to Denver. Which, considering the coaches of these two teams, is not a surprise at all. Absolutely. Playing in the first overtime after Denver scored in the first half, and in the second half it was SMU. Costa plays it into the air. An interesting thought. You never know what Costa is thinking, but 95% of the time it's the right thing. Yeah, but he's so creative. I wonder right. if sometimes his teammates get caught off guard. I mean, obviously they practice with him every day. They know all the things he can do better than you and I do, but he does, as you said, he's so creative and he, he as Kevin Hudson says, Costa sees things on the field that nobody else sees. Right. I wonder how many times his teammates just get caught flat-footed figuring there's no way you were going to get that ball back to me. Three minutes left in the first overtime. As a SMU goal kick is coming up for Cole Johnson. Now a windless night, a low humidity night. That's certainly helpful on a night where you're headed into your 98th minute of play here in Dallas. That uh, it is not as humid as it's been for the first couple weeks of the regular season. No, but if this were a home game for the Pioneers, you'd have 98 minutes at elevation as well. That's a great point. So either way, it's going to be exhausting when these two teams get together. Fouls on Jake Meekham running through the back of the bigger Simonson. Two twenty to play. Number nine Mustangs trying to find the golden goal to end this thing. Nice little run by Denver's Aiden O'Toole to come out and pick that one off. And a slide tackle by Allender to take it right back. Here's Endoy on the edge. Endoy onside. One on two here. Endoy trapped. And a good play by Denver to knock it away. All the way out to midfield. Meanwhile, there is a player down for Denver. 
all the way across on the SMU side and it's tough to see Aiden O'Toole down like this and holding his knee. Yeah, he's grabbing his right knee, which is scary. Mm. I mean, it wasn't a dirty play. Allender got the ball. It was a, certainly a clean tackle, and then O'Toole's down because he, his momentum simply carried him into uh, Allender and flipped. But he has been down a long, long time. Allender is the man in blue checking on Aiden O'Toole here, standing over him, patting him on the chest, talking to him. Yeah, Allender's a big, strong, physical player, but he is not the kind of player who tries to hurt anybody. And, uh, you know, he wants to beat Denver, but he wants to beat them with their best 11 on the field. And Aiden O'Toole is certainly part of that best 11. Stoppage with 148 in the first overtime. As Denver is team led by Jamie Franks, a team that thrives on playing really physical what they call fighting football playing every play team first mentality they have come to dallas and given smu everything they wanted thanks to the early goal by destin norman and then they've had to survive just a flurry of attention by smu attackers against the pioneer goal this continues to be an extended break near the end of the first ot yeah and that's you hate to see that regardless of which team you're on Aiden O'Toole is such a wonderful player and such a critical part of what the pioneers are doing again Allender wasn't trying to hurt anybody he made a play on the ball he made a, a good play on the ball and it looks like you know we're not doctors but o O'Toole is up on his feet he's going to hobble to the sideline he's certainly limping badly but the Denver trainer is letting him walk under his own power now helping a little bit and uh, nice to see Allender again coming over and, you know, expressing his concern for his opponent. And Denver sends in Lucas Russo, who started this matchup, the senior out of Brazil and a transfer from Barry University. As O'Toole continues to labor over toward the near sideline, the third year starter in the midfield from here in Texas, Lake Travis High School. In Central Texas in the hill country. Yeah, that obviously doesn't look like a player who's you know trying to sell a call or anything like that He's really laboring as you said and now one of his teammates comes over to help And the rest of them are over checking on their Their teammate as he hobbles to the sideline. Hopefully Aiden O'Toole is okay And again just like uh, what happened on the SMU side Denver Sends it out to SMU for the goal kick. Here on the restart is Endoy. Slips it or tries to slip it to Pino on a run. It's intercepted by Denver's Griffin Meyer. We've talked a few times this year about Pino able to really sort of burst forward and get behind a defender. And that was one run where maybe he just hit the gas a little too soon. Because had he waited, uh, there was a lot of space where he could have maybe found a teammate. Pino tries to slip it back. Eyes on Costa. Costa couldn't catch up with it. And a rushing Norman. One minute remaining in the first overtime in a 1-1 matchup. They'll play a second overtime if there's no goal by the end of this 50 seconds. Ben Smith playing it in the middle. Smith with a little bit of a run, a long pass down the side. And a play that bounces away and out for a goal kick and perhaps one more rush for SMU here at the end of the first OT with 30 seconds to go. At the end of regulation, there was a similar situation where maybe the Mustangs were going to try to take one more rush. And Cole Johnson took the same approach he is now, which is very, very patient. And he kicks it away with 15 seconds to play. Scott Gay Simonson in the air. And as that one's played into touch, that will do it for the first overtime. We'll go the other way and go into another 10 minutes. Not really a conservative stance, but very careful, very smart. And then simply rely on the offense, you know, the top two or three guys on each side to try to create any offensive chances. 
Just a single substitution. It came on the side of Denver as Kengo Ohira comes back in the game for the overtime period. This last 10 minutes here in Dallas is that's into touch off of SMU. And Knox is still down on the play as well. Roman Knox reaching for an ankle. Knox, who did not play at all in the opener against Stanford, had a nice 16 minutes in the effort against HBU. And the transfer out of UNC had a shot that hit the crossbar off a restart that, you know, nearly was a highlight real goal. And now here in this one, he's played the entire match. Yeah, you don't want to see, obviously you don't want to see anyone go down, but he's had a really nice effort tonight. Um, our best friend Becky Regal making another appearance out on the field tonight. And she's getting a lot more publicity and attention this year than I think Kevin Hudson and his staff would really like. They certainly appreciate her, but they don't want to hear her name called this often. Uh, Knox is up on his feet. And he's limping over to the far side, which is usually an indication he's going to try to come back in. Although Bailey Sparks is also up and taken off his warm-up penny on the side, so we may see Sparks come in for Knox. Now Knox has been attended to twice in this one. And this is going to stay with Denver. Knox got hit in the head, or knocked heads with a teammate. I believe it was Knut Ollander back in the first half. This one a lower body injury. As Bailey Sparks does intend to check in. But right now, Ojeda trying to make a play to end it for Denver in this sudden death situation. As Bailey Sparks does intend to come into the match here. It's not allowed to as of yet. Here's Ojeda. The edge of the box chips it off of an SMU player and will have a corner with a minute gone in the second overtime in a tie game. And if you're on the road, if you're the visiting team, it's a little more acceptable to play for a tie. I'm not suggesting Denver's doing that. They're certainly spending time in front of the SMU net. Here's O'Hira, the line drive off of an SMU player to the top of the box, and Simonson clears it out for Costa in a counterattack for SMU that stalled a little bit. Endoy plays it across to Simonson, who tries to keep it and does so with the chip to the near side. Costa chases it down. Endoy had to wait a minute for the uh, Costa pass, which really sort of broke up that fast break, but the Mustangs did a nice job getting, keeping possession. And Allender. now they've got the, the cavalry pushed forward. Warrington, line drive in, is headed out of trouble, at least for now. And here's a bending chip in. That is out for a corner. The sliding kick inside by Trevor Wright, and Wright sends it out for a corner, and SMU now has their first corner opportunity of the overtime period for, to try for this golden goal. Knut Ollander with the left foot will take it. You see big six foot three Skage Simonson, one of the players out in front. Do the Mustangs have a corner play to end it? Ollander ready to go, bending to the far side. It is tipped up in the air and played out by Denver. Throw in coming for SMU as we roll under seven to play in the second OT. Leland Grant again being very specific on the geography on these throw ins. This one dribbles all the way in on net. Bailey Sparks thought somebody was going to go after that one. It just goes as a long shot for Sparks and an easy stop for DeSantis. But now you see Sparks back into a little more familiar spot on that substitution. All the defenders were pushed up forward, so he played in the back. And he's largely been an offensive player through, admittedly, a three-game college career. And now he's able to press forward and join the offensive attack a little bit for the Ponies. An attacking midfielder, a creative guy, says his head coach. And here is a foul against Mads Westergrain. And Denver enthused to get the restart in their favor. Westergren objected to the call, but only momentarily. He did clip him um, and arrived just a second late. There really wasn't much of an argument to be made. Westergren clears this smartly. 
headed back in by Roman Wynn and chipped in with the right foot of Trevor Wright. Is it onside? Looks like it is, and a sliding grab made by Cole Johnson with the on-rushing Destin Norman, who had the goal in the first half. He was lurking. And Tom Haney was about a step shy of, of getting a header on that, and he, when the ball rolled over to Cole Johnson, Haney ran into the goal and was sort of stretching awkwardly. I wonder if he pulled something or is a little sore somewhere other than just the mileage that all these guys have put on tonight. Five minutes left as this is headed back out. And Sparks plays it to the back. Haney finds a man on the far side. Pino slides it inside. Costa, so dangerous, but wide. Costa usually pulls the trigger like that and goes lower right corner, but he was out in front of the left post and uh, pulled it just a couple of yards wide. And had he been on frame, that would have been that would have ended it because DeSantis didn't move until the ball was almost past him. Costa held scoreless in this one after back-to-back -back braces to open up the season. Costa had three goals in a very good spring season for him in 11 games, but he already has four goals in the three games this year. Four and a half left, an aggressive throw in, deep up the field and into the corner. That's where it's taken by Denver. The dangerous De Leon plays it out front. But Marinus is a marked man. And here comes SMU on the counter. The chip ahead. Endoy races down to the end line in the box. On his left foot, it's blocked on the dribble in and cleared away by Denver. Again, another nice play by Trevor Wright, who has been rock solid in the back for Denver all night tonight. Bailey Sparks rushes on. SMU, four minutes to try to end it. Costa looking back post maybe for Endoy, but just too strong for the senior. Costa's as good as anyone at chipping those soft floating serves into the box. But that was a little too tall for Endoy and too short for Skage Simonson on the outside. And in a waning second overtime, another rush for SMU comes up shy. Three and a half to play. One to one to score. Somebody have a magical moment here at the end to send their team to a win. Are these two very capable teams destined for a draw? I think if you're Denver, if it ends up that way, I think if you're Denver, you're a little, you take a little more gratification out of it simply because SMU is a ranked team and you're playing on the road. Both of these teams would love to win, but there's absolutely no shame in a draw either way. As we said, it's a good chance that both these teams are in the NCAA tournament at the end of the season. Here's Scott Gay Simonson, the playmaker. Simonson in a double team has it poked out and a throw in coming for the very capable Lane Warrington. And there's a stoppage right now with a man down holding his base for Denver. It's one of the pioneers. Trying to make sure of who it is before we say. Obviously one of the defenders that was there to try to mark. Scott Gay Simonson. It's Eli Marinus. Yeah, it looked like he caught an inadvertent arm up around the shoulder or head area this shakes out the cobwebs he's all right clock stops with 231 and now restarts on the throw in by warrington here in the double overtime it's a little short it's headed back to the far post and then cleared out and again it was your defenders tom haney flicked it on brandon trevega got the header toward the goal not enough on it to get it into the corner of the net but these defenders have been critical targets in these uh, set pieces all night long. Warrington with the throw in once more. And this one's going to be on Skage Simonson as he bodies up one for one with Lucas Russo and pushes down a man that's 40 pounds lighter than he. Skage Simonson doesn't agree with that call and neither do I. It looked like he was holding his position. Give away uh, in the middle. Russo reached around him. 
Simonson dispossessed from behind with a nice tackle by Russo. And it's secured by Denver with 1.38 and the clock running. The goal for Norman in the first half. The goal in the second half by Papa Endoy. And I almost got the go-ahead goal on a bicycle kick that went off the crossbar. That would have been an unbelievable handball call play as well. Norman. He pleads his case, but we got 70 seconds left in this. Yeah, it's time it's is not time now. for uh, lobbying your case. A deep kick by Canuda Allender. And it's possessed by Denver at least for now and then a foul as well and a yellow card coming up against Bailey Sparks. Yeah, Sparks can't believe that one. I didn't see the foul. That's Destin Norman who's down grabbing his lower right leg. Clock stops with 51. It's the fourth yellow card. Make it the fifth on SMU. Costa Warrington Knox and Doy also issued the yellow in this one. Norman is now up and heading forward and really more than anything what that yellow card does is it allows the entire Denver team to press forward. You've got DeSantis taking this free kick about 40 yards off his own goal line and all of his teammates but one now all 10 of his teammates are across midfield. Pioneers looking to steal one. It looks like it went off an SMU head evident. Evidently not. No, this is going to go to SMU. You're absolutely right. It went off the head of Lane Warrington, and now he's taking the throw in. Well, SMU has a chance at one final rush. Only 30 seconds left in the second overtime. Otherwise, we get a tie. And here comes Denver. Denver on the takeaway. A tackle from behind with no call. 19 seconds left. And there's a tackle with a call instead. Now 11 seconds left is all. They've got to have a free kick as the clock continues. Now a stoppage and a yellow card against Skage Simonson right here at the end will give Denver an opportunity to set up, albeit a deep set piece and a deep restart, but at the same time, certainly an advantage. It is, and Simonson and, and Costa were doing what you have to do there, which is sort of casually walk in front of a restart with seven seconds left, trying to interrupt the Pioneers' efforts to get a quick restart. Here comes Ben Smith, a final chance to win it for the Pioneers. Chips it into the box, far post, a header is kicked out with two, with one, that's it. Two outstanding teams. 